aimless to the ECR Minerals is developing two prime gold exploration assets at Bayliston and Creswick in Australia's Victoria Goldfields. ECR acquired three properties in 2021, with two of those within each license area. Plus, it has exploration licenses in Queensland, Northern Australia, a 70% majority stake and a gold asset in the Philippines, and some legacy smelter royalty deals. Since we last spoke to Adam, ECR has appointed Andrew Haythorpe as the new chief executive and reported its highest gold, highest grade gold intercept yet from HR3 at Bayliston. Hello again, Adam. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you going, Alan? I'm very good indeed. Very good indeed. Thank you. Very good indeed. So, Adam, your non-exec director, Andrew Scott, has an interview scheduled with your new chief executive. And of course, you've been spending some time with him in recent weeks in Victoria, both at Bayliston and Creswick. How did that go? Yes, uh, I uh, met Andrew, I think it was last week now, and um, spent three days with him, uh, just going through, showing him all our projects, uh, a lot of field work, as you see other the photos there. It was actually very good, actually. It was very, uh, I think he was quite surprised, actually, to see uh, the quality of the work um, and, uh, you know, and um, sort of professionalism we're, um, we're sort of showing for the company. And um, so I'm looking forward to working more with him and uh, learning, learning from him, from his experiences. Um, and, uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Before we look in detail at the latest updates from Victoria and obviously the, the visits that you, you, uh, you went on with Andrew, um, ECR was, of course, recently awarded three exploration licenses in the Lulworth Range area in northern Queensland, covering around 900, 960 square kilometres. When do you plan to get down there to start work, Adam? And I'll bring up a slide now of Lulworth. Yes, um, well, we're uh, just in the process at the moment, just uh, uh, finalising, um, uh, you know, just uh, um, acknowledgement to the landowners and that about accessing there. You, you've got to give them about 10 days notice. Um, we're also just sort of refining, uh, you know, what equipment do we need to get in there? It is actually uh, sort of semi-rugged in there, so it's going to be a typical camp and field and on the walks and, um, you know, that sort of situation out there um there's a lot of ground there to cover as you can see on that map there you know there's you know easily uh 200 square k's i could see there um just those anomalous areas there um so i'd say that it's going to take a good couple of months of sort of work um to cover all that area there and uh, follow these um gold anomalies up in these drainages um uh through andrew uh, Andrew Haythorpe. Um, we've got a couple of people and a couple, another geologist and some field technicians and field um, geologists uh, up in up in the area, up in North Queensland, and uh, they're currently um, putting a bit of, bit of a proposal, you know, a budget and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, we're hoping to actually get boots on the ground uh, within probably a month and a half, hopefully, at the latest um there has been a bit of a delay in the wet season um it is sort of subtropics up there um, or dry tropics as you would call it uh so they've actually had a delayed wet season there this year so uh, it's actually well when i last spoke to the geologist up in north queensland it was still raining last week so um so it's probably going to be a little bit of a late start um because of those circumstances okay okay um Moving to Creswick now, you've been exploring old abandoned mines and drill sites on ECR's land at the Brewing Lane property. You, uh, ECR recently published some LIDAR imagery uh, on social media. I, I'll bring it up here. What are we looking at here, Adam? Yeah, so that's a close up of um, some of the recently acquired um, LIDAR data, which has been released by the uh, government here in Australia. Um, essentially what LiDAR data is, is it's a laser detection radar imagery, um, very highly accurate. Uh, it actually sees through all the vegetation. Um, and so, you know, anything, any soil disturbance, so from old mining works or alluvial gold workings, any of that sort of stuff, uh, you can really see the trends um, through all the um, 
otherwise, you know, th through the vegetation there. So um, the government is actually planning on releasing a lot of this uh, LiDAR data in time over across for the whole state in the next year and a half or so. Um, but so far, the Creswick and Ballarat area has been released to the public and we've been utilising that, as you can see on the screen there. Um, and the uh, great thing is, is it's just verifying where all workings are. It's also showing, well, the, probably the biggest thing and an advantage is, is that it's actually showing, um, you know, where possible other targets are. Um, so in particular there, if you look on um, slide B on your right there, um, the, uh, the old alluvial workings from the 1850s um, can clearly be seen going up the gullies there and up the hillsides um, following the uh, gold trail, so to speak. And then, um, and you can, uh, and in particular that central area there where I've got marked on there unknown reef workings, uh, there is no surface hard rock or, you know, source of the gold there found as yet. Um, but clearly you can see that the alluvial workings are showing that there's evidence there to suggest that there's a shedding of gold there or a source of gold there, but it hasn't been found yet. So, you know, these sort of, um, this sort of mapping is really uh, helping um, ECR Minerals to, uh, yeah, come up with soil sampling targets and, um, and programs. And uh, we want to sort of get kicking, kickstart on that ASAP. Um, and, uh, and obviously the outcome of that will be uh, some, hopefully some drill targets and um, find some uh, blind deposits. Excellent. And do you have that sort of imagery for the new license area between Ballarat and Creswick? Yes. Yeah, so, so far, um, the imagery available is all the way through our Creswick tenements. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no other LiDAR data available yet for free anyway. Um, you know, for Ballaston or even the Tambo licenses over east of Victoria. And, uh, and also the Queensland tenements uh, um, underneath Lux Exploration, uh, there's, no, there's no data available for that either. Okay, okay. So moving now to Bayliston and HR3, of course, on April 22nd, ECR announced the best gold intercept yet from whole BD3, BH3 DD027, uh, with 0.2 meters at 52 and a half grams per tonne of gold, uh, from 126 metres down. This tied in with a laminated quartz vein with a stibnite sulphide shear zone. I'm going to bring up a, a slide here for you to talk through, Adam. Yeah, so um, that uh, that shear zone you can see there clearly up the um, in that top core tray photo in the bottom right there, you see the laminated vein there. Um, it's uh, got a hanging wall there of a major shear zone there with some lower grades in it. But um, there's visible stibnite, which is an antimony sulphide, um, which is currently being mined at nearby mines such as Costafield. Um, so one of the outcomes of uh, Hole 27 so far is uh, we've got a very good orientation on that structure there in the core there. And um, when you actually plot that up in 3D space on the software we're using, um, it actually correlates and lines up perfectly well with all the other drilling we've been doing to the north uh, northwest there, as you can see on the map. So that includes holes such as um, BH3, DD34 um, and 35. Um, so it's looking like, uh, even though it's a narrow structure, uh, but it is looking like there's some, some continuity anyway of uh, getting towards 300 metres and strike there. That's fascinating. So, so also, um, we, 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 I mentioned stibnite, of course, that there is a correlation, I believe, between stibnite and gold, and you provided some data here. Can you, can you talk us through this correlation? Yeah, so a bit of a technical, um, just a technical background here. Um, so what we did uh, sort of um, was actually, we sort of completed a lot of it at the end of last year, and we, we announced earlier about some of these soil anomalies we've had over the Scowlers Reef and um, such areas as that, which is actually currently where we're drilling under. Um, so one of the outcomes was is that we wanted to, well, one of the hypotheses was is to see how does the uh, XRF gun, which we use in house here, how well does that um, correlate with um, known Pathfinder 
elements. Um, these pathfinder elements, such as uh, stibnite and arsenic, are known to um, uh, be pathfinders to where there's possible gold mineralization in the structures that surface. And um, so that was the target. So what we ended up doing is um, on the, uh, the picture on the left there is that um, the, uh, yeah, the actual assay data from the actual lab correlates um, pretty well, um, yeah, like correlates very well with the uh, XRF data um, for arsenic and stibnite, but all the other elements such as copper, zinc and um, lead, there is no correlation. So the outcome of that was is that we can, um, yeah, we can we can rely on the XRF data of uh, for us, and you can stick night as pathfinders. And so on the uh, the picture on your right there um, is uh, comparing uh, what elements actually correlate well with the gold. And so what we're actually finding is is that stibnite has probably got the best spatial relationship to gold, and then followed up by arsenic. So if you logically look at um, the the uh, XRF results in arsenic and stibnite in particular can be trusted. That, that means that um, we can start utilizing those particular elements with XRF for our geochem and our soil sampling um, across the whole regional tenements around Ballaston. Um, and so we can really target and focus on certain areas and um, yeah, and actually uh, get a lot of value out of it and save a lot of money. Excellent. And you say these correlate closely with nearby mines such as Costerfield and uh, Fosterville? Uh, yes. So Fosterville, probably not as much, but Costerfield, which is about uh, 50 kilometres to the west of our Ballaston tenements. Tenements that's uh, got a very strong antimony, which is called Stibnite, association with the gold. Um, other nearby tenements too, um, who have been working area, um, in particular Southern Cross Gold, a subsidiary of Mawson Gold, just to the north of us. Um, uh, they've also seen and reported similar correlations between stibnite and arsenic and also Nagambi nearby. Okay, brilliant. Um, now, a week or so after the that announcement, you uh, followed up with another strong result from hole 022, also at HR3, which returned half a metre at um, 12.74 grams per tonne. And... Um, both Chairman David Tang and Chief Executive Andrew Haythorpe said how this, how the data and intercepts were helping the company to build a model of the Maori incline with all the evidence of extended, extended mineral, mineralization. Just, just how big do you think the this resource is, Adam? Oh, a tonnage. Uh, I think to be honest, at the moment it's probably only a small tonnage, but um, uh, it, so it. All the drilling, so hole 22, hole 27, and all the other drilling uh, to the northwest there, which is hole 34, 35, 33, and then also earlier holes like hole 12, which we reported on. Um, these are all forming part of the bigger picture of the, um, the down dip of the Mary Reef uh, anticline. Um, uh, so essentially, what it is is it's uh, sort of an, a slightly east overturn or east dipping. Um, sort of fold anticline structure and uh, we've identified at least one to two major structures coming up it, which is associated with stibnite and gold. Um, and so hole 22 uh, was actually uh, drilled near the intersection between the hard up reef and the marrow reef there um, in, the, in the shallower part of the deposit. Um, it's still open to the south east as you see on the map. Um, and we uh, plan on actually drilling that in the next couple of months, following it to the southeast to see where it goes and if it extends that far. Um, and also, we've just finished some recent drilling just to see the depth of that depth of that system there. So, in, on the map there, we've got a hole there that says um, BH3 hole 38. Um, we've actually finished that hole. Um, we have had actually hit mineralization as predicted. In the right place, which correlates well with hole 27 and the other holes to the northeast, uh, northwest. And then um, on top of that, we've actually uh, drew, it's not on that map there, but we've actually just completed a drill hole in between hole 38 and hole 27 just to check for that continuity. Um, at this stage, um, yeah, it's actually being logged right now as we speak. So uh, hopefully in the near future, we'll have the re results for that. Um, 
the outcome of all this is just to see, you know, how long is it, how long is this system? Is it open at debt still? Um, and there's no reason to suggest um, it isn't at this stage. Super, super. Okay, so lots more to come from Kresik and Bayliston, and of course the Lulworth Range uh, initial exploration uh, uh, party that you said will be on the ground in about a month. Um, certainly, we look forward to Andrew Haythorpe's initial interview with Andrew Scott. Um, but aside from that, what else should shareholders be looking for in the near term? Yeah, so uh, one of the um, well, one of the things the shareholders can um, uh definitely be watching out for and i'm eager myself is uh some more assay results we've got a lot of assays results there i mean assays are waiting in the lab um the biggest problem at the moment is the delay in the labs yeah. um apparently it's a common occurrence so australia-wide um uh referring back to that map there uh, as an example would be hole 34 and hole 35 we're very eager to that where we reported visible gold um so uh, that's something for the shareholders to be uh, looking forward to. Um, coming in July, uh, the directors, including myself, uh, are coming over to England um, to sort out some business and uh, do a bit of meet and greet. So um, if any of the shareholders are, um, want to come and visit and ask questions and so forth, uh, yeah, they're welcome to it. We certainly will. We certainly will. Um, just remains to me to say, um, Adam, a fascinating update. Thank you for that. Um, Many thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in July, but no doubt we will speak in the meantime. Thank you, Alan.